Okay, yeah, the Crimson Diamond demo. Um, Julia Minamata is going to be discontinuing the Crimson Diamond demo, the current one, uh, on Tuesday. And replacing it probably with the Chapter 1 demo that was removed back in May. Um, but anyway, Crimson Diamond is a homage to like text parser uh, old adventure games. Um, specifically, you know, the Laura Bow series of the, you know, the Dagger of Alma Ra and the Colonel's Bequest. Um, it takes a lot of inspiration from that. Uh, Julia uh, Minamata is a pixel artist um, and has m been making this game by herself for years, <laughs> and it's finally coming out this year. Um, the music is by uh, Dan Polycar, um, but then everything else, like all the pixel, all the programming, is one person. So that's why it's been in development <laughs> quite a while. Um, but yeah, the uh, demo is being removed from Steam on Tuesday. Uh, chapter 1, I already had it downloaded, but it's been removed for new people uh, as of earlier this month. But it's just because it's getting close to release, so it's getting, you know, a new demo. Um, but yeah, you can check out the manual um, on the uh, Steam page for the game. Um, but yeah, I have not played a lot of these types of games because um, it was kind of like I didn't get into Sierra as much. Um, I was played more LucasArts uh, after it became more point and click. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And I didn't play much of Merle's Bequest because it creeped me out. I got kind of like on edge with it and I was just like, I can't do this because most of my game playing is like late at night um, in the dark. So um, yeah, the uh, <sighs> this is by a Canadian uh, set in Canada, so it's going to be interesting. But yeah, uh, Laura Bow was another one of the, you know, Roberta Williams games. Um, okay, go to menu. Okay, got it in graphical inventory. Better version 19. Welcome to the tutorial. My name's Nancy Maple. Yeah, that, that sounds fake. I'll be showing you some of the basics playing a text presser adventure game. Following the text prompts at the bottom of the screen will walk you through the tutorial. When you first enter a room, it's useful to start typing look. When you type look in a room, a game will describe important features. You, you see a cupboard and a green door. Not mentioning the guy in the corner. Uh, the game will also list the other characters in that room. Jack is here. Talk man or look woman will work too if you're having trouble with names. Type look Jack to learn more about him. He's really fucking tall. If you have the sound effects turned up, you might hear a score sound. This will indicate you're accomplishing something in the game. This sound will only play the first time you perform the action. Okay, that's that's good. Um, okay, my sound's up all the way. Um, but yeah, the uh, uh, Colonel's Bequest has like a super sleuth meter and it's kind of really hard to get, so it's good that there's a... You know... A chime thing. Jack is a tall, lean man with a shiny bald head. He is Mr. Richard's employee and is in the charge of the cooking, the cleaning, gardening, 
and a myriad of other issues the lodge might require. He's weary, but still seems to be in decent spirits. Jack is somewhere in his 40s. <coughs> I had to cough through all that. Also, this is probably the worst fucking time to play this because it is 3.30 a.m. But I want to get it done in case it gets like removed from being able to be played or replaced with another version, like an update. Jack is here to help with the tutorial. How do you do? Look at characters at different points in the game. They give you additional information. Oh. Nicholas. I gave you soft food. It's down here. You don't need to... The cat just bounced off the... Yeah, yeah, you're gonna stare at me. Try to, to talk to Jack and see what he has to say. Yeah, he's. I got him food and it's down here, but he got up on the counter and is staring at me for me to give him some soft food, which he already has. I gotta remember, I don't need to do... Hello Jack, my name is Nancy Maple. Remember to do... I don't need to do capitals. Nice to meet you, Nancy. He reminds me of someone. Uh, oh. Can't remember his name. He played, uh... One of the big wigs on Stargate Atlantis, and he, uh... Was the emergency hologram doctor on Voyager. You can ask me about this tutorial. Ask, type Ask Jack about tutorial. About, ask about tutorial will also work. That's a weird typing because I haven't typed for a while on a laptop. The default movement methods Click to walk, shown by two footprint icon. Blue in the upper left corner of the icon indicates <sighs> spot is. Or you can use the arrow keys to move around the screen. Also, ask me about inventory. Access inventory by typing inv or i in the text parser. Or you can press tab. Cursor will change to an i. Click on the i and the items in your inventory to look at them. Issue of the Toronto i from a few weeks ago. How many times will I have to say i? Click on the gray. Um, Lupe item. At the bottom inventory window, the cursor will become. I have no idea what that word is. You can examine some of the inventory items more closely using. You admire the menu dots that compromise the newspaper photograph of a round cut diamond. The natural diamond described in the article would be an octahedron, not a faucet specimen. What an embarrassing inaccuracy! Close inventory window by pressing tab, escape key, or enter. Let's examine objects in a room using. I don't know what that word is. I've examined the cover to learn more about it. Now we're gonna go see how we can walk. Ooh, she's fast. She's look at her go. Look at those legs. Those gams there. Oh, he's getting down. It's right here, Nick. Got you some soft food down uh, earlier. He has a problem. He likes to give the soft food to his sisters. And not eat it himself. Copper's made of a lovely fine grain wood, though it's seen better days. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get him some... more. Yeah. 
Ah, I got up. I got him some more food, cause there wasn't much in there. And then he left it after I got him an extra helping. Copper is made of a lovely fine grain wood, though it's seen better days. Check something. Okay, we're recording. I was wanting to make sure I was recording the voice. Um, Carpet's made of old. Let's see what it is. Most furniture won't be that interesting. For example, this is just an example to examine. It's just an example. I'm gonna ask Google how to pronounce that. Hey Google. How do you pronounce L-O-U-P-E? Here are the top search results. It's <laughs> oh, with the Welsh and the French uh, work I've done. I want to pronounce the E. Anyway, loop. Uh, most furniture won't be that interesting. For example, this is just uh, to examine. This is just an example. If you're not sure what to do next, you could check your notebook. Try ask Jack about notebook. I'm glad it's set on graphical. A notebook can be helpful if you get stuck. I'll tell you what you need to do next in order to progress through the game. Careful, if you simply follow the notebook's prompts, you might miss important details. Yeah, I get a little super sleuth. Notebook will be displayed if you type note or n. Okay, what I should explain with the super sleuth, the reference I'm going to keep making, is in the Colonel's Bequest, um, there is like a points calculator, like how many clues you've found, who you've talked to people, like secret passageways, etc, etc. Um, and at the end of the game it gives you like a rating, like kind of like the Sar Carmen San Diego business. And it counts for everything. So in order to get the super sleuth, you have to have found everything in the game. The problem is some of them are bugged. And some of them are weird at how to get it. Or what accounts for it. Um, like, what I first heard about this game was because I was watching uh, a video on secrets and stuff um, for the Bur Colonel's Request. Um, but, um, yeah, the, uh, like, some things in that, like, it's so hard because, like, there's a hallway where you're supposed to get a whiff of. Uh, perfume and you it does sniff sniff when you found it and it has you know uh, you smell a scent of perfume when you haven't found it because it's swapped and then there's like a thing like where you have to eat like six or seven crackers uh, or whatnot or actually no I think it's like if you eat two of them it counts as multiple crackers out of the whole box. You can close the notebook by clicking the X button, the escape key, or enter. Get the hat! There's a tutorial. Look at Jack. Talk to Jack. Tutorial and get the hat! You open the cupboard by typing open cupboard. If you type open door, it'll open the green door and not the cupboard door. 
Sometimes there will be more than one cupboard, in which case you might have to walk close to the cupboard if you want, if you want to open. Coupad. You open it. Agor Coupard. Looks like there's something inside the cupboard. If you look cover, the game will tell you what the cupboard looks like. If you look in cover, the game will tell you what's inside the cupboard. Search cover also works. We see a green hat in the cupboard. Look hat. I was going to just take the hat. Get lice infested. See a green hat in the cupboard. That's my hat. Try take hat. You just have like is this your place? This little tiny like barn shed that has like this poor guy in the corner. Congratulations, you complete the tutorial. Open door to leave this tutorial. You took the, you take the green hat. Congratulations, you're done. Open the door and walk out to leave. Thanks for playing the tutorial and hope it was helpful. You leave the tutorial, either use the arrow keys or walk through the door. Or click the feet icon in the right of the open doorway. We will reset once you leave it. Thanks for playing the tutorial. I'm so sleepy. Sorry, miss. You can't ask me that in the tutorial room. Rude. Oh, we found a bug already. There we go. Crimson, Ontario, 1914. Press enter to continue, press escape to skip intro. I love the dithering. That's not crimson. There you are, Nancy. What is it? What have we've been? This is it. We what we've been waiting for. Not doing voices, too tired. Far up north, a fisherman found a massive diamond in the belly of a fish. Diamonds! It looks like it's done in Nimbus paint. That could be a real boon for our mineralogy exhibit. We need something better than those, that those dilettantes over in geology. Yeah. Like, I don't mean just like, you know, pixel art. I mean like, if you took like the most, it was like, DIAMONDS! Uh, we want our exhibit to be the talk of the town. It's too bad that we can't spare anyone to head up in the middle of nowhere on such a long shot. You can spare me! Let me go, Professor Plumber! Her face is sending me. <laughs> it would be perfect. Everyone else is busy with the new ex exhibit. Well, we've just been learning the filing system. That could wait a day or two, couldn't it? Hmm. Not usually in the habit of sending unsupervised young ladies into less civilized regions. But as luck would have it, the discovery was made near a lodge where I'm sure you could stay while you conduct your field work. You win, Nancy. Go on home, pack your bags, and get the train up north. Hooray! Thanks so much, Professor. 
I'm gonna go. You find something, you take a big splash at the museum. Who knows? Maybe the university will finally accept you as a mineralogy student. Good luck, kiddo. I won't let you down. Fuck misogyny. Uh, a few hours later. Here's my train. This is it, my first time out of the city. I'm going to make the most of this trip. I can't wait to see the rocks of Northern Ontario. <laughs> Goodbye, big city. Hello, adventure. Problem is it's any button, so you can't really take screenshots with Steam overlay. A few hours later. Oh, I have to press it again. Zzz. You don't. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Not at all. Please have a seat. Thanks. What would have been cool is if they were in like different positions, like from when a few hours later happened. Name is uh, Kemi Kishiro. Where are you headed? Pleased to meet you. I'm Nancy Maple. I'm bound for a town called Crimson. Oh my, you've got some hours yet. I should know because that's where I'm going. Yeah, uh, trying to think. Uh, I think this is too later in. Uh, Like, what I was thinking of, what this was reminding me of, was uh, Murdoch Mysteries, but that's, um, I think that's just around, uh, um, 1900. I think this is 1914. I'm a clerk from the Royal Canadian Museum. My boss sent me to check out the diamond claim up here. Yeah, it's, um, I've gotten a anniversary from uh, the Canadian Museum Association before. Um, I took a course and I wrote them for a, you know, like um, emerging professionals thing. I got uh, some money from them, but it wasn't what they promised me. It was... I had to write like a little, um, like an essay about my experience, what I learned afterwards, and they were supposed to cover like all of my uh, transportation costs that I had applied for and they only gave me partial of it, which is really annoying. Haven't heard of that discovery. Then again, I don't pay much attention to the news. It's a very strange story. Up by Crimson, a fish swallowed a huge diamond. A fisherman caught it, placed it open, and there it was, a spectacular sparkling gem. Can you imagine? Jumped at the chance to investigate. It's my first time out of the city. I couldn't be more excited. What are you saying when you get up to Crimson? When we get to Crimson. Place called the Crimson Lodge. Ah, I'm staying at the Crimson Lodge. I'm a birder. I hear there are nesting colonies of cormorants up there. That's what I want to see. I wouldn't mind seeing the 500 locks while I'm in the area. I love to see the big ships up close. That that's kind of hard for me to read if it's so locks or wonderful. We can be traveling companions. I very much like that. You and Kimmy chat amicably for a while as the day wears on. The rhythm of the train moving over the tracks and the monotony of the scenery lulls you into a deep sleep. Oh, the connector announces Crimson this stop. Oh, fuck, we're alone in the dark. Nancy, Nancy, it's time to go. Ah, thanks. Oh no, where's my luggage? It's not here, it's not a luggage left at all. 
My field kit's in here. What am I going to do? The train will be leaving soon, Nance. We have to leave now. Someone's fucking swiped them. They're, they're going to be disappointed when they open that up. And uh, it's just going to be a uh, geologist's field kit. Ah! I know what she's supposed to be just looking around, but it's kind of like her eyes are not moving how they should be. <laughs> Again, like I'm half, I'm very sleepy. Oh, I had no idea anyone else would still be on the train. Hello there. Hello. I didn't notice you on the train. Isn't that funny? Oh, not really. I was in the first class car. Oh, I see the nesting cormorants. Is that? I'm here to see the nesting cormorants. Is that why you're here? Cormorant, is that a type of rodent? Oh, look at him go. Ah, excuse me, folks. But I was set to pick up just one person from the station tonight. A European fellow, expert mineralogist on the island, hired by the federal government on loan from Antwerp. I wasn't told he was bringing any secretaries, wives, girlfriends. Um, go eat shit. Ah! I'm sorry for the confusion, sir. Jack. I'm sorry for confusion, Jack, but we don't know this man at all. I am Nancy Maple, and my friend here is Kimi Kirishio. I was sent here from the Royal Canadian Museum to investigate the diamond claim by Crimson Lodge. And I'm here to see the nesting cormorants! I hope she gets to see the cormorants. We're both here to stay at the lodge and go about our business. You know which way it is from here? I surely know where it is, because that's where I drove out from. But, I'm sorry to tell you ladies, the lodge has been closed to the public for months. You didn't hear? My boss, Mr. Richards, is getting on. He's done with the lodging business. All he wants is peace and quiet, but then the whole diamond fiasco starts up. Folks up, all up in arms. He's not pleased at all, I can tell you. Gentleman is here in the government's orders. Mr. Richards can't do much about that. Hi, Lydia. I wish Neptune would get on my lap. Lydia's here trying to grab my microphone. But you two... Oh, that's unfortunate. But you only have yourselves to blame for being uninformed. Let's be off, Jack. Good evening, ladies. The thing is... The thing is, it ain't no one coming here at all this time of night. And the nearest accommodation is a lodge, which is a few hours away by automobile, even still. Look here, I'll drive you ladies up to the lodge for the night. Tomorrow morning I'll bring you back here so you can catch the train. As it is, Mr. Richards is going to be peeved about hosting unexpected guests. Like, I can see um, our protagonist, uh, Nancy Maple, uh, not knowing that the, there was, the lodge wasn't open if it wasn't open for months. But Kimmy here, um, like, if she has to set for a certain time to see the cormorants, you think she'd be doing, like, you know, telegraph up and be like, you know, book accommodations or whatnot. I mean, even more than he has already. His sister's come up from the city to stake her claim. claim. And she's brought a lawyer to boot. Fuck a lawyer. Uh, come along now. Hurmph. Oh, you're going to make him carry. Uh, sure, I'll get those for you. Look, he just did a little spinny. Um, okay. Sir, your trucks arrived a few days ago. Boy, they sure are heavy. Oh, yes, of course. Sure gets dark here at night. Lucky for you, I've made this trip many times, used to it. Folks would come here in the summers for recreation. Before my time, settlers came to this area in hopes of building lives for themselves. But once the mines were used up, there wasn't much reason for them to stay. The soil ain't that good. Have you seen any cormorants? I'm hoping to see some. It's, it's kind of like, you know, Earth Oars. I hope we get to skin, skin grad soon. Uh, yeah. They nest up in the cliffside. Stay away, though. They don't like being disturbed, particularly during nesting season, which happens to be right now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why Kimmy is here, Bucko. So if you're wild about birds, I'll let them alone. You do more harm than good. 
Besides, tomorrow morning I'll be taking you back to the train station. You won't be having any time to go looking for him. Kimmy seems the type that would sneak out in the night to go, like, wander and try to find them. Have you any other diamonds been found lying around the lodge? First of all, no way to know if that rock even came from around here. I've lived in this area for years and ain't seen any diamonds, so I know for a fact that it ain't come from these parts. They said that the man out cut it out of the belly of a fish. Diamond could have come from anywhere upstream. You folks are wasting your time, sorry to say. Who cares about shiny rocks anyway? No use to anybody. You've got, you're in a little car with two mineralogists. We'll see about that. Travel weary companions resist your attempts at chit chat. Seems that Kimmy and Albert have fallen asleep, although in the most almost complete darkness, it's hard to tell. Possible for Jack to hear you from the back seat about the cacophony of the engine and the automobile riding all over the rough. Um, country road, you decide it would be best not to distract him anyway. Here we are. Whoa, it's spectacular. You know what? I almost don't mind having more bodies in the lodge. Feels so not so empty. Feels like old times. Make yourself at home while you're here. Thanks, Jack. This is going to be like a mystery in one night. Welcome to Crimson Lodge. Miss Kirishiro. Kishiro. Miss uh, Maple. Your bedroom is upstairs at the end of the hall on the right. Bedroom across the hall from you. That's Mr. Richard Sweet. Try to keep quiet. Stay out of his way, won't you? No, we'll get like pots and pans and we'll go outside his door at like 1 a.m. and start banging them. He shares a suite with Margot. She's his lady friend. Me and Corvus are sharing the bedroom with the pink, the two pink beds right next to yours. Opera demand that you use my bedrooms. That's where he is. I don't know why he's so insistent, but the customer's always right. Hey, ha. Yeah, be a little ass, aren't you, Albert? Just book a room and then tell the one well, the workers there. Well, I would like your room. It's the smallest bedroom. wasn't really meant for guests. Nessa's room is across the hall from Albert. I'll stay away from her if I was you. So not only is it, you know, one of the workers' rooms, it's not a fancy room. It, and he's traveled by first class, so he's getting basically like a walk-in closet type room. After all, I get this luggage upstairs. I'm going to stay up for some supper. Would you have? Wouldn't do to have you all starve, eh? Start up some supper. Why do you explore the lodge a little? Talk to the other folks. Most importantly, stay out of my hair. I'm a busy man. What fucking hair, Bucko? Not literally, of course. Uh, and if you want to shower at night, use the upstairs bathroom near the stairs. It's very pink. You can't miss it. I'm going to bet someone gets murdered there. Hmm, wonder if, if Nate's still here. How many places do I got to sit at the table tonight? I'm going to my room. Yeah, the room you kicked poor Jack out of, bucko. You and Kimmy head upstairs to your bedroom. You don't have any luggage to unpack, but you hang your hat coat on the footboard of your bed and consider yourself settled in. Chapter 1, Introduction. To move Nancy, you can click the feet icon in your target's destination, or use the arrow keys to move. Hmm, I should talk to everyone and get to know them a little before dinner. Your notebook will tell you what you need to do to progress through the game. Type notebook or N when you need to refer to it. We have lots of notes. Click the arrow buttons to press on the arrow keys to scroll through them. Special objectives that must be completed to progress in the game will be marked with XXX. Seeing as I've lost my luggage, I don't have much to amuse myself with before dinner. You didn't really lose it. Someone swiped it. Perhaps I'll take a look around. Time will pass a bit faster. Time to look in the text parser was a good way to get your bearings. <sighs> this is the bedroom you're sharing with Kimmy. 
Para twin beds and matching night dens are against the east wall. Having explained the bed closes the fireplace, a clever move on her part. Some nights are still chilly at this far north. Kemi is here. Can't use lol. This bedroom you're sharing with Kemi. Para twin beds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Windows offer breathtaking views of the dense forest below. It's dark outside. Wrong word. That's what I mean. I'm half asleep. You sit down. Kimmy Kira. Kishiro is a petite Asian lady in her mid-thirties, in her late thirties. She's regularly dressed in knickerbockers and sensible shoes. She seems shy and doesn't <coughs> feel much about herself. During the train ride, you managed to glean that she's her family immigrated from Japan in the 1870s. Kimmy is writing her sketchbook with a pen. I... I've never been to a place like this before. I'm excited to explore and I love meeting new people. Yes, you are an inquisitive type, aren't you? Jack did invite you to introduce yourself to everyone else, after all. It's only polite. I certainly am. Would you like to join me? Uh, no thanks, Nancy. I'm exhausted. That bumpy ride from the train station has left me a bit frazzled. Looking forward to some peace and quiet before dinner. Uh, I can take a hint. I can leave you be. Sorry I won't be able to stay at the lodge and see those nesting cormorants. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. I like to live life day by day. Book will track main objective progress. <sighs> also ask characters about different topics. I specify who you're asking about then what you would like to ask. I ask Kimmy about birds or just ask about birds. Yeah. Kimmy, Margo, Albert, Nessa, Corvus, uh, Nathan, Evan, and Jack. Okay, it is Nathan. I wasn't sure if it was Nat or Nathan. I've heard there are nesting cormorants in this region. Nowadays, they're rare. Something also, um, in the cutscenes and the opening, I could press space which is what I'm used to for progressing <clears throat> text things. Um, but this doesn't work in these examine. It did in the, you know, cutscenes and stuff, so I have to press enter. Fishermen kill them because they think the birds eat up all the fish, but it's not true. Poor things. I'm sorry, Nancy. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> It's just a hobby of mine. I'm not very good. We're not showing my drawings to anyone. It's too embarrassing. The triptych of small wood cuts on a colored paper hanging on silver frames. About like a white photograph of a mountain hangs over the fireplace. That's what I was wondering what it was. Fieldstone fireplace looks like it would come in handy on chilly nights. There's a fireplace tool stand next to it. Some powdery soot accumulating in the fireplace. Fireplace stand holds a shovel and a poker. Stand up first. Shovel is needed for proper care and maintenance of the fireplace. Poker might poke through your pocket and puncture your leg. Oh, that sounds deadly. I don't know what that is. There are two twin beds in the room with matching quilted covers. Your coat and hat are hanging on the board of one of the beds. Um. 
I don't know what that word, what the thing is, that armoire thing. Um, that's what I mean. It, it's not a good night for me. Can't use China in this game. See anything there? Were they okay? The bedroom boasts a selection of area rugs. There's one under the coffee table and one under each bed. Right now, the room one on the left and one on the right. I have to tell me I have to be closer. It said to have doors. Well, Hey, Williams has matching blue shades instead of matching nightstands. Need neither lamp nor the pair of them. They're perfectly as they are. so well lit that you don't require a lance light. They're mostly for the decorative purposes. How are we, how is we well lit? We're in 1914. Let's see, it looks like it would be a nice place to do some reading. direction you would like to go. Type help or H to open the help window. There's a list of parser shortcuts to simplify the agent's browser example. OD means open door. Kevin doesn't need it open. Master of oil pennies framed and hung at the end of the upstairs hallway. Black reads L. Harris. The northern end of the upstairs hallway, left leads to the master bedroom, light re leads to the room you share with Kimmy and impressive oil pennies. <laughs> oh, not anything noteworthy. Sorry, I can't do that. Nothing behind the painting. This is the master bedroom. Mr. Richard shares it with Marco. You feel a little weird about invading their private space. There's a wardrobe, a nice stand on the left, and right of the bed, there are two doors on the south hall. More doors. Or that doesn't come much of anything. Workshop contains a variety of books of many subjects. Not, most of them are in French. Most of the cover would like to open up. Cherry frame portrait woman riding a horse hangs up on the fireplace. Jack does a fine job keeping this fireplace clean. That's quite actually is no result.
Roll of white tape in the nightstand drawers. Bordeaux, Bordeaux, transport you to the Fin de Sicile, Paris. It's shiny, opulent, perhaps slightly tacky. It's very, very pink. A mirrored vanity is the focal point of the room. Exotic perfumes hover in tense localized clouds that you can almost see every movement. Sir Scrooge brings your sense to your nose. Power compacts on the vanity. See a pretty blonde woman in a fashionable dress. Hi there, it's nice to meet you. I'm, my name is Nancy Maple. Pleasure to meet you, Mademoiselle. I am Margot. Welcome to the Crimson Lodge. How long do you, will you be staying with us? I'll be here tonight, fortunately. I was sent here by the Royal Canadian Museum on assignment. But Jack says I'm due to leave on the train tomorrow, according to Mr. Richard's wishes. Hmm, I see. I'm sorry we don't get to know each other better. Crimson Lodge is a very lovely place. I was a city girl for a time, but those days are behind me. Talk to Kimmy, talk to Margot. Mademoiselle Maple, I wish I knew. Dark-haired woman in crimson dress kisses a middle-aged man with a comb over at a dinner table. Not sure what those Art Nouveau posters advertising, but it's in French. I was so able. I wish I knew. I know it's new, but I can't remember. It has one or two S's. So, walk in closet, luxuriously appointed. It is an enormous mirror on the wall and an ornate bench on the center of the room. How? There's a shelf full of footwear and some fancy blocks and hangers and a selection of elaborate hats. Wardrobe and two chest drawers are surely bursting with more finery. Chisel ever. I 
a window. The wardrobe is empty. Another window. Black mirror with a silver frame. It is must cost a pretty fortune. I'm actually getting very sleepy. Choose the name to say this game is 50 states lost maximum. Yeah, I can't do anymore. I just am getting so drowsy. So I'll pick this up later. Not helpful. That's not giving me payment. <laughs> 